Now let's move to the third categories, which are the fiduciary funds. And here we're going to have four of them. The first one is the custodial funds, also known as agency funds or fiduciary funds. But the technical word, I like the word agency because as an agency, you are an agent. And an agent represents someone else. Those are fund held by an organization or a government as a custodian or trustee on behalf of another entity or another individual. I'll give you an, an example of this. So in this arrangement, the organization has the responsibility to manage, invest, and disperse the funds according to the terms of the agreement, legal requirement, or designated purpose, but the funds do not belong to the organization itself. For example, you could have a county, okay? For example, in the U.S., we have local government, we would have a county government, we would have a state government. And the reason I am, you know, local is the smallest, county is a little bit larger in the state. For example, the county could collect, could collect state taxes. Well, hold on a second. State taxes belongs to the state. Why is the county collecting them? Well, the county is collecting them for the sole purpose of transferring this money to the state, just helping the state out. So what they do when they collect this money, they put it in an agency fund because it's not their money. They're agent. They're basically representing the state. So that could be an example of it. Or domestic relationship pay payment on behalf of the state. For example, when you have a dispute between a husband and a wife, they sue each other. And I work in this department, domestic relationship, in one of the counties in Pennsylvania. And what happened is this. The state maintained the program, but the county collects the money. So the county collects the money. Then they send the money to the state or they disperse the money in between the different spouses. But it's not really the county has nothing to do except they are a middle person, a person in the middle holding the money for another party. And this is what we mean by custodial or agency funds. Here we use accrual accounting. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Another fiduciary fund is private purpose trust fund. It's private purpose. The, the key word here is private. This is used by the government to account for resources held in a trust for the benefit of specific individual, private organization, or other entities rather than the general public. So let's assume you're a wealthy individual and you want to give money uh, to help a specific organization or specific group of people. Well, you can set up your own trust or you can give this money to the government and tell them, look, you maintain this for me. So it's called a private purpose trust fund. In this arrangement, the government is working as a trustee. So rather than having a lawyer or having um, uh, your own entity, you'd say, I want the government to, to maintain this for me. Okay, the government is working as a trustee. They manage, invest, and disburse the funds according to the terms, whatever you told them, or the legal agreement. So those, those funds, because they are private purpose trust funds, they are not owned by the government because it's a wealthy individual. The reason I say wealthy, because usually wealthy people set up those private trust funds, and they are separate funds from any other government funds. So that's why we have to keep track of them separately in a fund called private purpose trust. So this money is used specifically for a purpose. What could be that purpose? Give you an example, scholarship funds. For example, the government now is a trustee, is responsible for managing and investing the funds, selecting scholarship recipient according to the criteria established by this donor, that wealthy donor, and dispersing the scholarship fund to the recipient. So rather than giving this money to the government, you could create your own organization and have people take care of this. Or you could say, I want the government to do so. When you give this money to the government, the government will have to keep it in a separate fund. And what's that fund called? Private Purpose Trust Fund. What's the purpose? Scholarship funds. Or you want to create a fund where they maintain the cemeteries for specific individuals, for all the people with your last name. That's a special purpose trust fund. So how do you know it's a special purpose? 
it's for a specific purpose and that purpose is not the general public you are specifying who you want to benefit from this money that's that's how you know it's a special a, a private purpose trust fund again you would use accrual accounting another fiduciary fund is the pension trust funds and from the name pension trust fund what are we maintaining the pension what is the pension it's the retirement plans type of fiduciary fund used by government to manage resources dedicated notice all you are managing the resources of providing retirement benefit to their employees so it's basically you're putting money away in a special fund called the pension trust fund to do what to finance the retirement of your employees so these funds are held in a trust with government or organization acting as a trustee managing investing and dispersing the funds according to the terms of the pension plan and the regal requirement now also pension trust fund are not owned by the government because once you put that money in the pension it belongs to the pensioners who are the pensioners the employees the future retirees of the government or organization and are segregated from other operating fund that's why you have them in a separate fund that's why these are called funds hey for example public employee retirement system for example i am part of the public employee retirement system in pennsylvania many government have established a pension trust funds for their employees such as pers purse or a teacher retirement system that's fine these pensions funds are designated to provide me when i retire benefit as an employee to government employees such as teachers police officers and firefighters the fourth type of fiduciary fund is the investment trust fund well this this fund is sometimes referred to as investment pools or pooled investment fund so what would happen is this these type of fiduciary funds are used to consolidate and manage the investment from multiple funds or participating entities so you might have a city okay and in that city you might have many boroughs okay one two three four five different boroughs and each borough is an independent entity what they can do they can pull all their money together for investment purposes they can pull all their money so each one for example this this borough in the city they have a million dollar this one has three million this one has six million so on and so forth extra money that they can invest so rather than each borough investing the money it doesn't have to be borrowed it could be two or three cities um, or two or three counties you know multiple multiple government and what they do is they create one trust fund and they invest all their money together why would they do that why would they do that is to achieve economies of scale what does that mean when you have a lot of money and you're giving it to a professional organization a finance professional organization and you're giving them for example if you're investing a million dollar it's different than investing 100 million if you're investing 100 million they're going to treat you differently they're going to lower your transaction cost they're going to give you more advice they're going to take care of you why because you are investing a larger amount so what they do they pull all this money together and they invest it together why to to gain economies of scale to lower their to save money simply put to save money and have a better service so state or local government uh, that's what they do they pull their money together so many state and local government in the u.s operates investment pool which are allows various government entities such as even school district many municipalities within the same city special district to pull their idle cash for investment purposes yeah, for example here a state treasurer office may establish an investment pool to manage short-term investments of funds from multiple government agencies now you're going to say okay how are we going to, how are we going to keep track of this well you're going to allocate the earnings from this fund based on your proportionate share of the pool so if you have a hundred million dollars and your county contributed 15 million and from that pool if you're can and we made ten thousand dollar of revenue well you're gonna get one thousand five hundred of income which is 15 million is 15 percent of the 100 million well you're gonna get this amount because proportionally you own 15 percent of the fund so this is how they distribute the fund now from a cpa or an accounting perspective what do you need to know about this you need to answer multiple choice questions such as this one about the various funds so which of the following is not a characteristic of a private purpose trust fund now you have the options a b c d the first thing i want you to be aware of is is not so be careful about these questions is not a private purpose trust fund what am i 
honing on the word private. It's not, so you have to be careful. A government acts as a trustee managing and dispersing the funds on behalf of a specific individual organization or entities. Well, yeah, this could be, this is a private purpose trust fund. The government is acting as a trustee. But that's not the answer. It's a correct answer, but that's not what I'm looking for. If it says which of the following is a characteristic, that will be A. But A is not the correct answer because that's not the correct answer. Let's move to D. The government is responsible for managing, investing, and dispersing the funds according to the terms of the trust agreement or legal requirement. Very similar to A. Very similar to A. It is a characteristic. So, out. Okay? Let's look at C. The funds are not owned by the government and are segregated from other funds. Well, money from a private purpose trust fund or private purpose, so the government doesn't own the money, so they are not owned by the government. Yeah, that's correct. And are segregated. They're supposed to be segregated. They're private. Well, that's also a correct statement about the private trust fund. Funds are held in a trust for the benefit of the general public. No. No, that's incorrect. That's not a characteristic of a private purpose trust fund. Why? Because one definition of a private purpose trust fund is it doesn't benefit the general public by its definition. Therefore, B is not a characteristic of this private purpose trust fund. What should you do? Go to Farhat Lectures to look at additional MCQs similar to this one that's going to help you understand these concepts better. Invest in yourself. Don't shortchange yourself. Whether you are studying for your CPA exam, you're an accounting student, or some other professional organization, invest in your career. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.